Ash Mysteries always loved India. That's where his parents are from, and his room at home in England is full of all these books that his Uncle Vikram sent him from India about gods and demons and battles and weapons and castles. So when he and his sister Lucky get a chance to go visit their aunt and uncle in India, he's really excited. But when he gets there, he finds out reality is not quite as good as what he expected. India is really hot, for one thing, and it's there's a lot of flies and a lot of snakes, which Ash really hates. So after three weeks, Ash is just ready to go home. Um, first, though, he has to go to a party hosted by the wealthy British Lord Alexander Savage. At this party, Lord Savage offers uh, Uncle Vic millions of dollars if he will translate these ancient inscriptions they uncovered at an archaeological dig. So it sounds like the chance of a lifetime for everyone, and uh, Ash is already thinking, what's he going to do with his share of the money? Is he going to buy a huge TV for his room? Uh, he's thinking of all the video game systems he's going to buy. But then he finds out that Lord Savage is in league with the Demon King Ravana. And Ravana has offered Lord Savage immortality if he will release Ravana from bondage. Of course, Ravana has a plan to take over the entire world, and the only person who can stop him is the current incarnation of the god Rama. Unfortunately for Ash, that turns out to be Ash himself. So if you like books about mythology or fantasy adventure, maybe you like the Kane Chronicles or Percy Jackson Chronicles or Magnus Chase, and you want to try out something a little different, then check out The Savage Fortress by Sarwat Chata. Save Me a Seat by Sarah Weeks and Gita Vatarajan. This is a story about two very different kids. Two kids who have nothing in common. Ravi has just moved to America from India, and he's new at Albert Einstein Elementary. Things are really different here. In India, he was a star student, and everyone in his class liked him. In America, they assume he doesn't speak English because they can't understand his accent, and he's the only Indian kid in his class, except for Dylan Samreen. But that's a little different because Dylan was born here in America. But still, when Dylan smiles and winks at Ravi on the first day of class, Ravi thinks he's found his first American friend. But boy, is he wrong. Joe has always gone to Albert Einstein Elementary, and he has something called auditory processing disorder. Because he doesn't talk much, and because he goes to the resource room for some extra help, kids assume that he's stupid, which is not the case. Some of the kids pick on him, and the worst one is Dylan Samreen. But on the first day of school, when Joe goes to take his normal seat behind Dylan, he sat behind Dylan every year alphabetically. He finds a new kid, Ravi, already sitting there. And he starts to hope that maybe Dylan won't pick on Joe this year. Maybe Dylan will pick on the new kid with the funny accent this year. This is a story about two very different kids. Two kids who have nothing in common, except a common enemy. And it just might be the thing that brings them together as friends. If you like a realistic story, if you like reading school stories, and especially for anybody who enjoyed the book Wonder, I think that you would really like this book too. Save Me a Seat by Sarah Weeks and Gita Fadarajan. This book is a biography of the last members of the Romanov family, the royal family of Russia. Uh, the Tsar Nicholas II, Empress Alexandra, their daughters Marie, Tatiana, Olga, Anastasia, and their son Alexei. A century ago, the Romanovs ruled a massive empire stretching from Poland to Japan. That's one-sixth of all the land in the entire world. If you converted their money to American dollars, they would be billionaires. In fact, at one of the lavish parties they threw, the Empress wore a gown with so many diamonds on it that the, the dress alone was worth ten million dollars. The family spent their time moving from one of their thirty palaces to another. What they really liked most was just to spend time with each other away from other people. Nicholas himself was quiet and shy and just wanted to spend his days playing tennis, going for walks, or reading books. But he was the Tsar and he ruled 130 million people with absolute power. This meant 130 million people in Russia lived with no constitution, no congress, no supreme court, and no voice in their government. Most of them were starving peasants who worked all day long in difficult and dangerous conditions. While well, most of the Russian nobles thought peasants were simple, happy people who spent their days singing and dancing in fresh-cut meadows, Nicholas learned the truth at the age of 13, watching his grandfather die after an assassin threw a bomb in his carriage. The Russian people were unhappy and hungry for revolution. There was one peasant who was pretty popular in the Russian court, the mystic Rasputin, who gained the favor of the superstitious Empress Alexandra after miraculously healing her son Alexei. 
So Rasputin was so popular with the royal family that one of the nobles, uh, Prince Yusupov, was afraid he was going to try to gain power. So he tried to assassinate him. Uh, Rasputin survived a stabbing, and when Yusupov tried to poison him, he just kept drinking, and nothing happened. So Yusupov pulled out a gun and shot Rasputin, sat down, and then looked down at Rasputin and saw him staring up at him, still alive. Uh, Rasputin then got up and started to strangle the prince, and then took off with Yusupov firing shots at him as he ran. He hit him in the head and he hit him in the shoulder, and then Rasputin was beaten with a rubber club, wrapped in chains, and thrown in the river. They say when they found Rasputin's body later that one of his arms had gotten out of the chains and that he was still alive when they threw him in. So how did he really die? You'll have to read the family Romanov to find out. Uh, and that's really just one of the mysteries surrounding the last days of Russia's royal family. Uh, did they all die or did some of them, like Alexei or Anastasia, survive? It's a century-old mystery that's really just been solved in the last ten years. So check out the family Romanov, Murder, Rebellion, and the Fall of Imperial Russia by Candace Fleming. about a book called Geeks, Girls, and Secret Identities by Mike Jung. This is about Vincent Wu and his friends in Copper Plate City. And Copper Plate City is a fictional city that exists in the world where superheroes and supervillains are real. And superheroes, they have fans just like athletes or musicians do. Vincent and his friends are huge fans of the superhero Captain Stupendous, who's the big superhero in Copper Plate City. They have a fan club, although it's really just three people in the fan club, and they know all about superheroes. And just like all the kids and teens in Copper Plate City, they get these text alerts on their phones whenever Captain Stupendous is out in public fighting a bad guy, like a hostile space alien or a giant radioactive spider. And the idea is that they're supposed to stay away from where the fighting is because they might knock buildings down or something, it might be dangerous. But what really happens is that all the kids and teens go to where the fighting is happening so that they can watch because it's just really cool. So the last time Vincent and his friends go to see Captain Stupendous fight, he's fighting this giant robot that's being controlled by a new supervillain, Professor Mayhem. And Captain Stupendous has to save Polly, a girl in Vincent's class. And then when he comes back, he, it's like he doesn't know what he's doing. He's not able to defeat this robot, which has never happened before, so the bad guy gets away. And Vincent and his friends think they need to help Captain Stupendous somehow. Now, how can a group of kids help a superhero? I don't know. But Vincent thinks, well, we do know a lot about superheroes. Maybe we can help our hero somehow. Um, but they don't know what happened to Captain Stupendous. What does Polly have to do with all this? And you'll have to read the book to find out. But this would be a great one if you like superhero stories, if you like science fiction, if you just like a heart-pounding adventure. You should pick up Geeks, Girls, and Secret Identities by Mike Jung. This next book is a graphic novel memoir by Jimmy Gamley, and maybe you've read his Amelia Rules books. Uh, this is the story of his life and how he got started in comics. In 8th grade at Immaculate Heart Middle School, Jimmy Gownley was a star. He was popular, the best player on the school's basketball team, and he had the top grades in the class. His biggest problem was trying to convince his teacher, Sister Rebecca, that comic books are appropriate reading material for school. Everything changed when a combination of chicken pox and pneumonia forced Jimmy to miss the championship game and caused his grades to begin slipping. Now as a freshman at Cardinal Brennan High, Jimmy worries he's just the kid who used to be special until he visits a local comic book store and learns that people have actually made money printing and selling their own comic books. Jimmy stays up late every night reading and drawing, so he decides to make his own comic. When he hands over his space fantasy comic to his pal Tony, Tony tells him it's just not that good and that he should write a comic about them instead. Jimmy thinks this is the dumbest idea ever, but his new comic wins him the respect of his classmates, his new girlfriend, his principal, and his teachers, even the grumpy, impossible-to-please sister Regina Alma. Soon the entire town is in an uproar over Jimmy's comic. He's being written about in the local newspaper and interviewed on TV. But will too much praise go to his head? The Dumbest Idea Ever is a true story of cartoonist Jimmy Gamley and how he got his start in comics. The lessons he learned and the friends that stuck by him. So if you like graphic novel memoirs like Smile or Sisters or Roller Girl or El Defo, or if you just want to read a good story about friendship and life and school, then check out The Dumbest Idea Ever by Jimmy Gamley. 
Thank you for listening to our book talks. I hope that you heard about something that sounds good to you. And if you did, then come on down to the library and you can check any of these books out for free with your library card. If you don't have a library card, you can get one for free at the library anytime that we're open. Just make sure you have a parent or guardian that brings you down to sign for your card. With winter break coming up, that might be a great time to come down and explore some of these books and see what we have to offer at the library. And from now until January 31st, we have something special going on, which is our winter reading club. Uh, we have winter reading club for children and for teens. If you are in up through grade five, up through fifth grade, then you'll be in our children's winter reading club. The way that it works, you'll get one of these game boards and all these boxes are filled with different types of books. So we have a book in a series, we have a poetry book, we have a book about science, all kinds of different books in here. And you'll choose any five that you want to read and read those books, mark them off on your game board and come back to the library and you'll earn a free book and you will earn fine bucks that can be used to pay a, a fine on your public library card or if you ever have a lost book you can use the fine bucks to pay for that. If you are in grades 6 through 12, you are eligible for our Teen Winter Reading Club. For the Teen Winter Reading Club, you'll fill out a little review form for each book that you read. The first time you do this, you'll get a free book, and then for every book that you read, you will get fine bucks, and you'll get an entry into our Teen Grand Prize Drawing, which is a $50 books a million gift card. So you just fill out these forms for each book that you read and turn them in at the team desk and then you'll be entered to win. So I hope that you'll come down and see us at the library this winter. Um, we really would love to have you come down and have a